concentration terms we'll talk about molarity molality and relationship between them first we'll talk about molarity which is denoted by capital m we'll write that polarity of a solution molarity of a solution is defined as the total number of moles molarity of a solution is defined as the total number of moles of solute present in per liter of solution present in per liter of solution so it is basically total number of moles of solute present in per liter of solution in simple terms we'll write molarity is equal to total moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter because it is per liter of solution right so volume of solution should be in liter this is important now moving further we'll write molarity which is denoted by capital m is equal to moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter we do not moles of solute as n solute and volume of solution as v solution so m is equal to n solute divided by v solution similarly we can write molarity is equal to total millimoles of solute divided by volume of solution in milliliter basically we converted moles into millimoles and volume of solution in liter into milliliter so moles into millimoles and liter into milliliter simply because we can write this because one mole is equal to 1000 millimoles and 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter simply when you put these values you will get the above results also molarity is moles of solute divided by volume of solution so we can write that moles is equal to molarity times volume right this is an important result which we will use further so moles is equal to molarity times volume now we'll write unit of molarity we know molarity is basically mole per liter right 1 liter is equal to 1 decimeter cube so we can write molarity as simply mole per decimeter cube so we can use both these units now we'll solve a problem here 11.1 gram of cacl2 is dissolved in water to form 200 ml solution then find the molarity of solution pause the video and solve by yourself now we'll solve it here we have to find out the molarity of solution so we'll write the formula molarity of solution is equal to moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter right so here cacl2 is the solute so we'll write the molecular weight of cacl2 basically molecular weight of solute which is 40 plus 2 times 35.5 which will come out to be 111 gram per mole now we'll write this is the solute now we'll calculate the moles of solute basically so we'll write n solute is equal to weight of solute divided by molecular weight of solute the weight of solute which is given in the problem is 11.1 gram right 
सो इलेवन पॉइंट वन डिवाइड बाई मोलिकुलर वेट ऑफ सोल्यूट विच वी कैलकुलेटेड अबाउ इट इज़ वन 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 ग्राम पर मोल इट विल कम आउट टू बी वन बाई टेन मोल्स सिंपली ऑल्सो द वॉल्यूम ऑफ सोल्यूशन इट इज़ गिवेन टू हंड्रेड मिली लीटर वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट इन टू लीटर सो टू हंड्रेड डिवाइड बाई वन थाउजेंड लीटर विच इज वन डिवाइड बाई फाइव लीटर नाउ पुटिंग दीज वैल्यूज इन दिस इक्वेशन इक्वेशन नंबर वन सो इन राइट पुट वैल्यूज इन इक्वेशन वन देन वील गेट मोलैरिटी ऑफ सोल्यूशन इज इक्वल टू वन बाई टेन डिवाइड बाई वन बाई फाइव राइट वन बाई टेन डिवाइडेड बाई वन बाई फाइव ऑन सॉल्विंग इट विल कम आउट टू बी वन बाई टू विच इज़ ज़ीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम एम इज हाउ वी डिनोट मोलैरिटी सो ज़ीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम दिस इज द एंसर नाउ मूविंग फर्दर विल राइट टू नोट्स हियर नोट नंबर वन विल बी मोलर सोल्यूशन वेन वी मीन मोलर सोल्यूशन इट मीन्स मोलैरिटी इज वन वेन वी मी वेन सेमी मोलर सोल्यूशन इज रिटर्न इन अ प्रॉब्लम देन मोलैरिटी इज वन बाई टू इफ डेसी मोलर सोल्यूशन इज गिवेन देन मोलैरिटी इज वन बाई टेन सिमिलरली वेन सेंटी मोलर सोल्यूशन इज गिवेन देन मोलैरिटी ऑफ द सोल्यूशन इज वन बाई हंड्रेड एंड वेन मिली मोलर सोल्यूशन इज गिवेन then molarity will be वन बाई थाउजेंड एंड नोट नंबर टू इज मोलैरिटी ऑफ आयंस इज एक्सप्रेस्ड इन स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट्स मैनी अ टाइम्स इफ एन आयन इज इनक्लोज इन अ स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट दैट मीन्स द मोलैरिटी ऑफ आयन इज गिवेन लाइक हीयर एन ए प्लस is enclosed in a square bracket similarly mg plus 2 similarly nacl ion is enclosed in a square bracket this is how we represent molarity now we'll talk about molality which is denoted by small m we'll write the definition that it's defined as the number of moles of solute it is defined as the number of moles of solute present in per kilogram of solvent simply this is the definition we'll write molality is equal to moles of solute moles of solute divided by weight of solvent n kilogram just remember this expression also we can write molality is equal to instead of moles we will write millimoles so millimoles of solute divided by weight of solvent in grams instead of kilogram we will write gram simply weight of solvent in gram just remember molality is equal to moles of solute divided by weight of solvent in kilogram now so we'll write the expression small m which is molality is equal to moles of solute n solute divided by weight of solvent which is w solvent in kilogram this is important also we'll write a here note first note is molality is temperature independent whichever quantities do not depend on volume are also temperature independent also the second note is weight of solvent is equal to weight of solution minus weight of solute right so these are two important notes for molality basically w solvent which is weight of solvent is equal to weight of solution w solution minus w solute simply now moving further we'll write relation 
बिटवीन मोलैरिटी एंड मोलैलिटी बेसिकली रिलेशन बिटवीन कैपिटल एम एंड स्मॉल एम हियर कैपिटल एम डिनोट्स मोलैरिटी एंड स्मॉल एम डिनोट्स मोलैलिटी राइट सो फॉर फाइंडिंग आउट दी रिलेशन बिटवीन दैम विल राइट द गिवेन टर्म्स विच वी ऑलरेडी नो वी नो मोलैरिटी ऑफ सोल्यूशन विच वी डिनोट बाई कैपिटल एम वी नो डेंसिटी ऑफ सोल्यूशन विच वी डिनोट बाई स्मॉल डी बेसिकली स्मॉल डी ग्राम पर मिली लीटर एंड मॉलिकुलर वेट ऑफ सॉल्यूट विच इज एम सॉल्यूट वी नो दीज थ्री टर्म्स एंड वी हैव टू फाइंड मोलैलिटी स्मॉल एम मोलैलिटी ऑफ सॉल्यूशन स्मॉल एम वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट स्मॉल एम सो इल राइट लेट्स एज्यूम वॉल्यूम ऑफ सॉल्यूशन इज इक्वल टू थाउजेंड एम एल बेसिकली वन लीटर सो यू कैन राइट मोलैरिटी इज इक्वल टू मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट डिवाइड बाई वॉल्यूम ऑफ सॉल्यूशन इन लीटर दिस इज द फॉर्मूला सिंपली वॉल्यूम ऑफ सॉल्यूशन इज वन सो यू कैन राइट मोलैरिटी इज इक्वल टू मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट एन सॉल्यूट राइट फर्दर वी कैन राइट वेट ऑफ सॉल्यूट इज इक्वल टू मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई मॉलिकुलर वेट ऑफ सॉल्यूट सो एज पर द गिवेन टर्म्स वी कैन राइट वेट ऑफ सॉल्यूट इज इक्वल टू मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट विच इज एन सॉल्यूट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई मॉलिकुलर वेट ऑफ सॉल्यूट विच इज एम सॉल्यूट राइट so weight of solute will come out to be n solute we calculated in last page which was simply molarity capital m so it will be molarity times molecular weight of solute m solute this is the expression for weight of solute we know that weight of solution is volume of solution multiplied by density of solution right volume of solution is given as 1000 ml density of solution is small d gram per ml it will come out to be 1000 d grams so weight of solution is 1000 d and weight of solute is molarity times molecular weight of solute moving further we'll write weight of solution is equal to weight of solute plus weight of solvent right so weight of solution we calculated on last page which is 1000 d weight of solute is molarity times m solute and weight of solvent is simply weight of solvent so weight of solvent will come out to be 1000 d minus molarity times m solute molecular weight of solute right now we we'll write the formula for molality which is moles of solute divided by weight of solvent in kilogram now putting the values so molality is we know moles of solute we can simply write molarity capital m instead of moles of solute the value of weight of solvent is 1000 d minus molarity times m solute and multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 to convert into kilogram so molarity which is small m is equal to molarity times 1000 divided by 1000 d minus molarity times m solute simply this is the formula you need to remember this is very important once again here we'll write small m denotes molality of solution capital m denotes molarity of solution small d denotes density of solution density of solution in gram per ml and 
the last one which is m solute denotes molecular weight of solute so just remember this formula and you will be able to solve the problems now moving further we will solve a problem here a solution contains i2 in benzene if molarity of solution is 2m and density is 1.2 g per milliliter then find out molality of solution pause the video and solve by yourself now we'll solve it here i2 is present in benzene so i'll write i2 in benzene here i2 is the solute and benzene is the solvent right so we'll find out the molecular weight of solute which is i2 so molecular weight of i2 is 2 times 127 which is 254 g per mole right we'll write the formula molality is equal to molarity times 1000 divided by 1000 d minus molarity multiplied by m solute we have to simply put these well put the values here so molarity is 2m so simply 2 multiplied by 1000 divided by 1000 density is 1.2 g per ml so 1.2 minus molarity again 2 multiplied by molecular weight of solute which we calculated 254 g per mole so it will come out to be 2.89 this is the answer simply हेलो एवरीवन अपन बात करेंगे वीक एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स की सो इल राइट कंसेप्ट ऑफ वीक एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स दिस इज लेक्चर टू ऑफ मोल कंसेप्ट एंड दिस इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड वीर फर्दर राइट दैट टू अंडरस्टैंड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स एंड इट्स टाइप्स we must have knowledge we must have knowledge about degree of dissociation basically apan ko degree of dissociation ke bare mein pata hona chahiye weak and strong electrolytes ko samajhne ke liye so we'll write we'll write degree of dissociation degree of dissociation is denoted by alpha we'll simply write first we'll write alpha is used for reactants the term alpha is used for reactants we'll write percentage alpha is equal to moles of reactant dissociated divided by moles of reactant moles of reactant dissociated divided by moles of reactant taken initially basically taken initially in the reaction multiplied by 100 this will give percentage alpha also we can write percentage alpha is equal to instead of moles we will write molarity because the container is same so so volume will remain the same so we'll write molarity of reactant dissociated divided by molarity of reactant taken initially molarity of reactant taken initially multiplied by 100 this is very important formula you need to remember molarity of reactant dissociated divided by molarity of reactant taken initially multiplied by 100 now we'll write weak electrolytes what are weak electrolytes so basically electrolytes which are weakly dissociated into their ions basically during a reaction the electrolytes which are weakly dissociated are the weak electrolytes simply this is the definition also we'll write that percentage alpha basically percentage degree of dissociation for weak electrolytes is less than 10% percentage alpha is less than 10% for weak electrolytes this is very important 
note also we'll write examples examples for weak electrolytes are example a weak acids weak acids like hcoh cs3coh and h2co3 h3po4 hf these are examples of weak electrolytes also weak bases are also weak electrolytes example ns3 nh4oh also most mostly organic bases are weak bases which are weak electrolytes basically like cs3 ns2 now moving further we'll write a reaction here for weak electrolytes we had hf as one of weak electrolyte hf dissociates into h plus and f minus ions here at t equal to 0 we have 2 2m of hf and t equal to 2 t seconds we have 1.98m of hf basically the h plus formed and f minus formed will be 2 minus 1.98m respectively so we write percentage alpha is equal to molarity of re reactant dissociated divided by molarity of reactant taken initially multiplied by 100 this was this was the formula simply we will apply formula in this above example so molarity of reactant dissociated dissociated is 2 minus 1.98 divided by taken initially which is 2 multiplied by 100 on solving it will come out to be 1% which is less than alpha percentage alpha here is less than 10% right so it is weak electrolyte weak electrolyte because percentage alpha in this case is less than 10% hope you understand this now moving further we will write about strong electrolytes first we will write the definition we will write that electrolytes which are strongly which are almost completely dissociated into their ions basically jo completely dissociate ho jate hain reaction ke dauran apne ions mein unhi ko strong electrolytes bolte hain electrolytes which are almost completely dissociated into their ions in aqueous solution here percentage alpha is more than 90% this is an important point here that percentage degree of dissociation dissociation will be greater than 90% examples will write strong acids strong acids are strong electrolytes example hcl hno3 h2so4 and other strong acids like hclo4 hi hbr like for h2so4 we can write h2so4 in aqueous solution dissociates into 2h plus and so4 minus 2 ions at t equal to 0 we have 0.1 m molarity of h2so4 at t equal to t second it completely dissociates so we get 0 m we can write percentage alpha is 0.1 minus 0 divided by 0.1 multiplied by 100 right so it will come out to be 100% this means it's an it's a strong electrolyte because degree of dissociation is greater than 90% simply now moving further we'll write b strong bases strong bases are also strong electrolytes example of strong bases you know naoh lioh caoh whole twice aloh whole thrice CSOH KOH these are examples of strong bases like suppose AL here we take an example of ALOH whole thrice it dissociates into AL plus 3 and 3OH minus ions t equal to 0 second we have 0.5 m of ALOH whole thrice t equal to 2 t seconds it completely dissociates so we get 0m AL plus 3 formed is 0.5m whereas OH minus ions formed is 3 times 0.5m so we write percentage alpha is degree degree of dissociation as molarity dissociated divided by mo in molarity of reactant taken initially multiplied by 
simply putting values it will come out to be 100% this means it's an it's a strong electrolyte also another example c is salts of group 1 and group 2 these are also strong electrolytes so salts of group 1 and group 2 metals are strong electrolytes example nacl kf rbf mg cl2 li cl hello everyone hope you are doing well today in lecture third of concentration terms we are going to talk about important terms which are frequently used in this chapter so we'll write first about mass percentage or w by w percentage we'll write w by w percent is equal to weight of solute divided by weight of solution multiplied by 100 this is a very important term you need to remember this formula weight of solute divided by weight of solution multiplied by 100 if somewhere it is written that 10% w by w nacl solution if somewhere this is written then you then it simply means that 100 g of solution contains 10 g contains 10 g nacl now moving further we'll write about relation between molarity which is denoted by capital m relation between molarity and w by w percentage so again this is very important formula which we are going to write So we'll write molarity is equal to W by W percentage multiplied by 10 multiplied by D, which is density, divided by m solute. We'll write we'll write the terms here denoted by m stands for molarity. W by W percentage stands for mass percentage, basically weight of solute divided by weight of solution multiplied by 100. D stands for density of solution which in general will be in gram per ml and m solute stands for molecular weight of solute so these are simple formula you need to remember now moving further we'll solve a problem here find molarity of 9.8% w by w h2so4 solution of density 1.2 gram per ml So we'll simply write the formula: molarity is equal to W by W percentage multiplied by 10 times D divided by m solute. So we have to find molarity, right? W by W percentage is given 9.8 multiplied by 10 multiplied by density, which is given 1.2 gram per ml divided by molecular weight of solute for H2SO4. We know that molecular weight of H2SO4 is 2 times 1 plus 32 plus 4 times of 16. it will come out to be 98 g per mole so simply we'll write 98 on further solving it will come out to sim it will simply come out to be 1.2 m molarity is 1.2 now moving further we'll talk about w by v percentage this is again very important term we'll write w by v percentage is equal to weight of solute in gram divided by volume of solution which will be in milliliters multiplied by 100 you need to remember this formula we'll also write one important point here that w by v percentage is temperature dependent this is temperature dependent because volume term is involved in this formula that's why it is temperature dependent wherever volume is involved the quantity is temperature dependent right so w by v percentage it depends on volume so it's temperature dependent whereas w by w percentage which we discussed earlier was temperature independent now we'll write relation between molarity which is capital m molarity and w by v percentage we'll write 
very important formula here that molarity is W by V percentage multiplied by 10 divided by M solute. You need to remember this formula. It is similar to the last one, just the density term is missing here, right? So we'll write M stands for molarity of solution W by V percentage, you know, weight divided by volume percentage and M solute stands for molecular weight of solute, right? So simply molarity is equal to W by V percentage multiplied by 10 divided by M solute. Now moving further, we'll write if somewhere it is written 10 percentage, 10 percent W by V MgO solution, then it simply means that 100 ml of solution contains 10 gram contains 10 gram MgO which will be in solute form MgO solute now we'll solve a problem that 40 gram MgO was dissolved to form 200 ml solution of density 1.5 gram per ml find first part W by V percentage, second part W by W percentage and third part molarity of solution. So we'll simply write here MgO whose molecular weight is M solute, we'll write molecular weight of solute which is 24 plus 16 which is 40 gram per mole, right? Also V solution which is here 200 ml and density of solution which is 1.5 gram per ml. So we'll solve the first part. We have to find W by V percentage. We know W by V percentage stands for weight of solute divided by volume of solution multiplied by 100. Volume of solution in ml generally multiplied by 100. So we'll put the value weight of solute which is 40 gram divide by volume of solution in milliliter which is 200 multiplied by 100 it will come to be it will come out to be 20 percentage now for second part we have to find w by w percentage we know it stands for weight of solute divide by weight of solution multiplied by 100 right so simply putting the value it is 40 which is weight of solute weight of solution we have to find out multiplied by 100 so we'll find out the weight of solution we know that density is weight divided by volume weight is density times volume for solution weight is density of solution which is 1.5 gram per ml multiplied by volume which is 200 it will come out to be 300 gram so 40 divided by 300 multiplied by 100 it will come out to be 40 by 3 percentage Simply this is the answer. Now solving the third part, we have to find the molarity, right? So molarity is moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter, right? So moles of solute, which is weight divided by molecular weight. So 40 divided by 40 divided by volume of solution in liter. So 200 divided by 1000, it will come out to be 5. So 5M, this is the answer. Now we'll talk about V by V percentage or volume percentage. This is again an important term. So we'll write V by V percentage is equal to volume of solute divided by volume of solution multiplied by 100. This is a simple formula. You need to remember also one important point here that volume percentage basically V by V percentage is temperature dependent quantity. This is temperature dependent quantity because you know volume term is involved here right also if somewhere 10 percent v by v percent 10 percent v by v ch3oh solution is written then it simply means that 100 ml of a solution contains 10 ml ch3oh 10 ml ch3oh which is solute basically. Now moving further, we'll write the relation between molarity which is capital M and 
v by v percentage so we'll write important formula here molarity is equal to v by v percentage multiplied by 10 times d divided by m solute molecular weight of solute this formula is very similar to relation between molarity and w by w percentage right here m stands for you very well know molarity of solution right v by v percentage stands for volume percentage which is volume of solute volume percentage volume of solute to volume of solution multiplied by 100 d stands for density of solution which is generally in gram per ml and m solute stands for molecular weight of solute right molecular weight of solute so just remember these important formulas now we'll solve a problem here 10 ml h2o solution whose density is 1 gram per ml is mixed with 4 ml ch3oh solution whose density is 0.8 gram per ml find out the molarity of ch3oh so we'll simply write here that for h2o on one side ch3oh on other side for h2o we have the volume as 10 ml and density as 1 gram per ml for ch3oh we have volume as 4 ml density as 0.8 gram per ml right we'll write volume of solution which is volume of solute plus volume of solvent so 10 plus 4 which is 14 ml here h2o is solvent right so density is weight by volume weight will come out to be 3.2 gram for ch3oh moles of solute ch3oh is solute so moles of solute is 3.2 divided by molecular weight of ch3oh which is 32 so it will come out to be 1 by 10 so molarity of solute will be moles of solute which is 1 by 10 divided by volume of solution in liter so 14 divided by 1000 it will simply come out to be 50 by 7 this is the answer hope you understand this thank you for watching Hello everyone we are going to talk about ppm and ppb these are simple yet important terms we'll write ppm as parts of parts per million whereas ppb as parts per billion we'll write both of these terms basically both of ppm and ppb are used for very very dilute solution basically dilute solution are the ones where weight of solute is neglected basically weight of solution is nearly equal to weight of solvent for very very dilute solution also we'll write that these are temperature independent terms temperature independent because volume term is not involved while defining ppm and ppb further we'll write ppm is equal to weight of solute divided by weight of solution multiplied by 10 raised to power 6 this is the simple formula for ppm and for ppb we will write weight of solute divided by weight of solution multiplied by 10 raised to power 9 so these are the simple formulas for ppm and ppb you need to remember them right now moving further we will solve a simple problem here find molality of 95 ppm mgcl2 solution so i'll write 95 ppm right so we'll write ppm stands for parts per million which is weight of solute divided by weight of solution multiplied by 10 raised to power 6 also we have to find out molality right so molality is basically moles of solute and solute divided by weight of solvent in kg so finally we have to put the value in this formula to find the molality 95 ppm mgcl2 solution this means 95 ppm mgcl2 solution means 10 raised to power 6 gram of a solution contains 95 gram of mgcl2 in it mgcl2 is basically the solute here right 10 raised to power 6 gram of solution has only 95 gram of solute so it can be easily neglected weight of solute can be neglected so we can write weight of solution is nearly equal to weight of solvent so weight of solvent is simply got 
the value for weight of solvent which is 10 raised to the 6 right weight of solvent which is weight of solution is equal to 10 raised to the 6 gram now we will find the moles of solute for MgCl2 95 gram divided by 95 gram per mole which is molecular weight it will come out to be 1 mole right now simply we will put the values in the formula of molality so we will write put values in equation 1 so molality is equal to moles of solute which is 1 divided by weight of solvent in kg 10 raised to power 6 gram now converting into kg multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 it will come out to be 10 raised to power minus 3 m so this is the molality hello everyone we are gonna talk about mole fraction this is lecture 4 of concentration terms we will write mole fraction of a component is defined as mole fraction of a component is defined as the ratio of moles of the component to the moles of to the total moles of all the components to the total moles of all components present in the solution so mole fraction of a component is defined as ratio of moles of the component to total moles of all components present in the solution we write mole fraction as xi this is how we denote mole fraction of ith component xi is equal to ni divided by sigma n this is important here xi represents mole fraction of ith component ni represents number of moles of ith component whereas sigma n represents total number of moles total number of moles of all components present in the solution simply now we'll move further we'll write mole fraction is a temperature independent quantity or temperature independent term because volume term is not involved while defining mole fraction so it's temperature independent also we'll write suppose we have solute and a solvent present in a solution we write moles of solute as n solute whereas moles of solvent as n solvent we'll write sigma n some total moles is equal to moles of solute plus moles of solvent right here if you have to write mole fraction of solute we'll write x solute is equal to n solute divided by sigma n similarly for solvent we'll write x solvent is equal to n solvent divided by sigma n if we simply add these terms x solute and x solvent mole fraction of solute plus mole fraction of solvent it will come out to be n solute plus n solvent number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent divided by total moles which is sigma n sigma n is itself n solute plus n solvent so if we put the value it will come out to be 1 so we got an important result here that sum of mole fraction of all the components is equal to 1 sigma xi is 1 now we'll solve a problem an aqueous solution consists of urea with mole fraction of urea 0 0.1 find w by w percentage and second molality solve by yourself now we'll solve it here x urea mole fraction of urea is given as 0 0.1 we can write it as 1 by 10 right x urea is basically n urea divided by n urea plus n h2o h2o because aqueous solution is given right so 1 by 10 can be written as 1 divided by 1 plus 9 if we compare lhs to rhs we can simply identify n urea is 1 whereas n h2o is 9 right we can simply observe moles mole number of moles of urea is 1 whereas number of moles of water is 
9 moles now here we are given urea ns2co ns2 the molecular weight of urea which is solute here it is 14 plus 2 times 1 plus 12 plus 16 plus 14 plus 2 times 1 it will eventually come out to be 60 gram per mole so this is the molecular weight of urea molecular weight of solute basically we will write the weight of solute as 1 multiplied by 60 moles multiplied by molecular weight which is 60 gram also weight of water here is 9 multiplied by 18 gram per mole which is molecular weight of water it will come out to be 162 162 grams now we'll solve the first part in which we have to find w by w percentage so w by w percentage is basically weight of solute divided by weight of solution multiplied by 100 right so weight of solute here is 60 weight of solution here is 60 plus weight of solvent which is 162 multiplied by 100 on solving it will come out to be 27% simply so this will be the answer now we'll solve the second part we have to find the molality which is moles of solute divided by weight of solvent in kilograms right so moles of solute here is 1 which is mole of urea divided by weight of solvent in kilogram so for water which is 162 multiplied by 10 raised to a minus 3 it will come out to be 6.17 so this is the answer now a solution is formed by adding mgo in water such that mole fraction of mgo is 0.2 if density of solution is 1 gram per ml find molarity of solution solve by yourself now we'll solve it here x mgo mole fraction of mgo is given as 0.2 density of solution is given as 1 gram per mole right sorry 1 gram per ml right we have to find the molarity of solution so we will simply write x mgo is basically 0.2 which is 2 divided by 10 which can be written as 1 divided by 5 x mgo is basically moles of mgo divided by moles of mgo plus moles of water right so it is 1 by 5 can be written as 1 divided by 1 plus 4 if we simply compare lhs to rhs we can observe moles of mgo is 1 mole and moles of water is 4 moles right simply we will determine the weight of mgo which is the solute here so 1 multiplied by molecular weight of mgo 40 g per mole it will come out to be 40 g and for water 4 multiplied by 18 which is 72 grams weight of solvent basically we'll write weight of solution is equal to weight of solute plus weight of solvent so solute weight of solute here is 40 gram and weight of solvent here is 72 gram so 40 plus 72 it will come out to be 112 grams density of solution given here is 1 gram per ml we'll further solve we'll basically find the volume of solution so density is weight divided by volume volume can be written as weight divided by density so volume is weight which is 112 divided by density which is 1 it will come out to be 111112 ml so molarity of solution is basically moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter moles of solute basically moles of mgo mgo is the solute here it is 1 divided by volume of solution in liter so 112 multiplied by 10 raised to a minus 3 on solving it will come out to be 8.92 so this will simply be the answer hope you understand this thing hello everyone we are going to talk about molarity of solution on dilution this is lecture 5 of concentration terms we'll write on dilution amount of solvent changes but weight and moles of solute remains the same basically amount of solvent will change whereas amount of solute will remain the same on dilution further we'll write suppose we have a solution in container 1 and on dilution it forms another solution in container 2 in container 1 we have molarity as m1 volume as v1 whereas on dilution basically when a solvent is added the final molarity becomes m2 and final volume becomes v2 
we have to find the value of m2 we'll write moles in container 1 as m1 v1 whereas moles in container 2 as m2 v2 this is for container 1 this is for container 2 we'll write moles in container 1 should be equal to moles in container 2 so m1 v1 should be equal to m2 v2 our main objective is to calculate m2 so we'll write m2 is equal to m1 times v1 divided by v2 so this is the simple way we calculate m2 you need to remember the basic theme so we got m2 is equal to m1 times v1 divided by v2 right here v, v2 is v2 is basically v1 plus v where v is volume of solvent added basically the volume which is added while dilution so volume of solvent added we'll write a note here the first note is if a solution of molarity capital m is diluted if a solution of molarity capital m is diluted x times then the final molarity of the solution then the final molarity of the solution will be equal to will be equal to m by x this is an important note and you can use this result frequently for solving problems so just remember if a solution of molarity m is diluted x times then the final molarity of solution is m by x now second note will write if a solution is semi molar if in a given problem you are given that the solution is semi molar or decimolar centimolar or millimolar if it's semi molar then molarity will be equal to 1 by 2 if it's decimolar then molarity will be equal to 1 by 10 if it's centimolar then molarity will be equal to 1 by 100 whereas if it's millimolar then molarity will be equal to 1 divided by 1000 so it's very simple just remember it now moving further we'll solve a problem here a semi molar solution is diluted 100 times find molarity of newly formed solution solve by yourself now we'll solve it here we have two two solutions in the first one we have the molarity of the solution this is solution 1 and this is solution 2 which is formed after dilution here the process of dilution is conducted in solution 1 the molarity is given as 1 by 2 because it's semi molar let's assume volume as v in second case we have to find the mol molarity whereas the final volume is 100 times v because it's diluted 100 times so we'll write moles in container 1 should be equal to moles in container 2 so in container 1 we have m1 times v1 should be equal to m2 times v2 simply putting the values so m1 is 1 by 2 v1 we assumed v m2 and v2 is 100 times v so m2 will come out to be 1 by 200 so this is simply the answer this is the long method now we'll solve it by another method by using the note which we uh, studied earlier so we'll write method 2 this is based on the note number 1 we wrote earlier so note 1 which was that if a solution of if a solution of initial molarity capital M is diluted x times then the molarity or then the final molarity of the solution will be m by x will be equal to m by x right so we'll simply use this result so we'll write initial molarity semi-molar so initial molarity is m initial is equal to 1 by 2 it's diluted 100 times so the value of x will be 100 so x is equal to 100 so the final molarity which we have to find out m final will be equal to m by x which is 1 by 2 divided by 100 so it is 1 by 200 simply this is the answer hope you understand
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग हेलो एवरी वन होप यू आर डूइंग वेल वी आर गॉन आर टॉक अबाउट मोलैरिटी ऑफ सोल्यूशन ऑप्टेन और मिक्सिंग ऑफ टू सोल्यूशंस अंडर दिस वील हैव टू केसेस फॉर फाइंडिंग आउट द मोलैरिटी ऑफ फाइनल सोल्यूशन वेन टू सोल्यूशंस विल बी मिक्सड केस वन विल बी फॉर नॉन रिएक्टिंग सोल्यूशंस इन विच द सोल्यूशंस विल नॉट रिएक्ट बेसिकली एंड केस टू विल बी फॉर रिएक्टिंग सोल्यूशंस इन विच the solutions present will be will react with each other and under reacting solutions will have two cases two sub cases basically the sub case 1 and sub case 2 the sub case 1 will be when no precipitate will be formed after the reaction after the completion of reaction and under sub case 2 will write that precipitate will be formed when two reacting solutions will be mixed now moving further we'll write about molarity of solution obtained on mixing of two solutions we'll discuss about case 1 which is when two non reacting solutions will be mixed so case 1 is for non reacting solutions so to understand this we'll draw a diagram here basically we'll draw few containers this is the container 1 container 2 and this is container 3 container 1 consist of solution 1 container 2 for solution 2 and container 3 consist of the final solution which is formed after mixing of the solutions present in container 1 and 2 so the container 1 consist of nacl solution container 2 consist of nacl again these two are mixed these two are non reacting solutions and they finally form nacl itself here the molarity and volume is m1 v1 in container 2 for con in container 1 and for container 2 it is m2 v2 and for the final solution final volume will be v1 plus v2 and we have to find out the final molarity right so final molarity can be written as total moles of solute divided by volume of solution divided by total volume of solution total volume because these two solutions will be mixed so total volume of solution in liters right this is the simple formula for calculating final molarity so we'll write molarity final will be basically total moles of solute let's suppose n1 is moles of solute in container 1 which is m1 times v1 and n2 which is moles of solute in container 2 it is m2 v2 so n1 plus n2 divided by total volume of solution in liter v1 plus v2 so moles is n1 v1 plus n2 v2 m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by v1 plus v2 this is the simple formula for finding out the molarity of final solution when two non reacting solutions are mixed just remember this basic formula now moving further we'll solve a problem here 100 ml of 0.1 m Al2SO4 whole thrice is mixed with 100 ml of 0.1 m AlCl3 solution. Find out the molarity of Al plus 3 in final solution. So, here Al2SO4 whole thrice is mixed with AlCl3. We'll solve it by using basic usual method without using the formula. So here we'll write the data given 0.1 m and 100 ml, whereas for AlCl3 it is 100 ml and 0.1 m. We'll write the millimoles. Millimoles is basically molarity times volume in milliliters. It will come out to be 10 in both the cases. We have to find out the molarity of Al plus 3 in final solution, right? So here Al2 SO4 whole Al2 SO4 whole thrice consists of two moles of Al plus 3 and three moles of SO4 minus two ions, whereas AlCl3 consists of Al plus 3 and three Cl minus ion. Basically, one Al plus three and three Cl minus ions, right? So here, two units of Al plus three is present, whereas in AlCl three, one unit of Al plus three is present. So we'll write millimoles of Al plus three 
for AL2 SO4 whole thrice will come out to be 2 times of 10 which is 20 and millimoles of AL plus 3 in ALCL3 will come out to be 1 multiplied by 10 which is 10 itself so we got the millimoles in both the cases now we will write total millimoles of AL plus 3 in final solution or in the solution so it will come out to be 20 plus 10 which is 30 30 millimoles now we'll convert it into moles so as to find out the molarity of AL plus 3 in final solution to so total moles will come out to be 30 divided by 1000 which is 0 0.03 now we'll write the total volume of solution in liters we'll have to find out so first we'll write in milliliters which is 100 ml plus 100 ml it will come out to be 200 ml now convert into liter 200 divided by 1000 it will come out to be 0 0.2 liters so we got the total moles and total volume now we'll simply write the molarity of Al plus 3 in final solution so molarity of Al plus 3 in final solution will be equal to total moles of Al plus 3 in final solution in solution divided by total volume of solution total volume of solution in liters right so simply putting the values we'll get 0. Point, we'll get 0 0.03 which is total moles of al plus 3 in final solution 0 0.03 divided by total volume of solution in liter which is 0 0.2 it will come out to be 0 0.15 m this is the molarity of al plus 3 in final solution now moving further we will solve another problem here equal volume of 10% W by VC2H5OH solution and 20% W by VC2H5OH solution are mixed find molarity of C2H5OH in the final solution so we will write here we have two solutions solution 1 and solution 2 both are comprised of C2H5OH right so as per the data given we have equal volume of both the solutions right so since it's equal volume let the volume be v milliliters in both the cases also we are given w by v percentage so percentage w by v is basically weight of solute in grams divided by volume of solution divided by volume of solution in milliliters multiplied by 100 this is what we meant by w by v percentage now we'll simply write for solution 1 we have w by v percentage as 10 so simply putting the values 10 is equal to weight of solute in gram so weight of solute solute is c2h5oh in container 1 divided by volume of solution in milliliters which we assumed as v multiplied by 100 so weight of c2h5oh for solution 1 will come out to be 0 0.1 v right similarly we'll write for solution 2 so here w by v percentage is 20 right so 20 is equal to w c2h5oh for solution 2 divided by v multiplied by 100 right so wc2h5oh for so solution 2 will come out to be 0.2v so we got the weights in both the cases we have to find out the molarity in final solution for c2h5oh now moving further we'll write that for solution 1 and solution 2 we have weight of c2h5oh for 1 is equal to 0.1 V whereas weight of C2H5OH 
for second solution is equal to 0.2 V right and we can write moles of C2H5OH for first solution is equal to weight divided by molecular weight the weight here is 0.1 V divided by molecular weight which is same in both the cases since it is comprised of C2H5OH we will write the molecular weight of C2H5OH which is 46 gram per mole right so simply 0.1 V divided by 46 this is moles of C2H5OH for solution 1 whereas moles of C2H5OH for solution 2 will be 0.2 V divided by 46 so we got the moles also we will write the volume of solution is equal to volume of solution for first for plus volume of solution for second it will come out to be V plus V milliliters which is 2 V in milliliters now we will simply write molarity of C2H5OH for solution 1 will be equal to moles of C2H5OH for solution 1 divided by volume of solution in liters so 0.1 V divided by 46 divided by 2 V ml now convert into liters 10 raised to power minus 3 multiplying it by 10 raised to power minus 3 it will come out to be 25 by 23 now similarly we will write for molarity of C2H5OH for solution 2 will be equal to moles of C2H5OH in solution 2 divided by volume of solution in liters so 0.2V divided by 46 divided by 2V multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 so molarity of C2H5OH in solution 2 will come out to be 50 divided by 23 so we got the molarities in both the cases now we will write that molarity that final molarity will be equal to molarity in solution 1 plus molarity in solution 2 also this final molarity can be written as m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by v1 plus v2 basically the formula which we discussed earlier we can calculate it with the same method but since we already used total volume for calculating molarity of solution in container 1 and 2 we don't need to use this formula we will simply write molarity 1 plus molarity 2 which is 25 by 23 plus 50 by 23 it will come out to be 75 by 23 basically this was the alternative method you can simply use the formula you will get the same result right so here we will write that you will get the same result even if you directly use the formula now we will solve another problem here equal volume of 0.2 m FeCl2 and 0.2 m NaCl are mixed in the final solution find molarity of Fe plus 2 and molarity of Cl minus basically if an ion is enclosed in a closed bracket this means we have to find out the molarity right and now we will write the solution so here we have FeCl2 and NaCl and these two are mixed we have as per the data we have molarity of FeCl2 is equal to 0.2 also the volume which is equal here so molarity is 0.2 m and for NaCl it is also 0.2 m and equal volume is given let's say it is V liters for both the cases now we will write that moles of Fe plus 2 for this solution can be written as 0.2 times of V and moles of Cl minus can be written as 2 times of 0.2 V because there are two units of Cl minus present in FeCl2 similarly moles of Na plus can be written as 0.2 V and moles of Cl minus can be written as 0.2 V there is only one unit of Na plus and Cl minus here right now moving further we will write that we got the moles we have to find out the molarity so 
simply here we will draw a container so you better understand the problem in this container we have FeCl2 mixed with NaCl this is the final solution here vo final volume is V1 plus V2 in liters which is 2V V plus V we assumed V liters right and we have to find out the final molarity which is total moles divided by volume of final solution final volume of solution in liters so n1 plus n2 divided by v1 plus v2 in liters so we'll solve the first part here we have to find out the molarity of fe plus 2 in the final solution so fe plus 2 is present in solution 1 but not in solution 2 right so we'll simply write the total moles which is 0 0.2 v plus 0 divided by 2 v in liters it will come out to be 0 0.1 simply similarly we will write for cl minus ions molarity of cl minus will be it is present in container 1 solution 1 as well in solution 2 0 so 0 0.4 v plus 0 0.2 v divided by 2 v it will come out to be 0 0.3 simply these are our answers 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 respectively hope you understand this. now we will discuss about case 2 which is for reacting solutions basically when the two solutions will react with each other under this we'll write the first subcase subcase 1 which is for no precipitate formation basically when no precipitate is formed after completion of reaction we'll discuss about this first then we'll discuss about second subcase under first subcase we have few steps which you need to remember in order to solve problem step one is write reaction and balance it so simply write the reaction as per the problem given and balance it step two calculate number of moles calculate number of moles from the data from the provided data of calculate number of moles from the provided data of molarity and volume basically you will be provided with molarity and mo volume you will have to calculate number of moles using this simple formula moles is equal to molarity times volume step 3 that is find LR basically the limiting reagent in case you don't know what's limiting reagent simply click on the I button appearing on the top right corner step 4 and this is the last step by using the concept of stoichiometry by using the concept of stoichiometry find number of find number of moles of by using the concept of stoichiometry find number of moles of product formed and and moles of excess reagent left basically by using stoichiometry in the end you can easily find number of moles of product formed and moles of excess reagent left this is pretty much our procedure right so simply for no precipitate form formation step one is right reaction and balances balance it step two calculate number of moles from provided data step three find lr step four by using stoichiometry find number of moles of product formed and excess reagent left now moving further we'll write a note here this is an important note we'll write that water is a very weak electrolyte water is a very weak electrolyte so we will neglect contribution of we will neglect the contribution of H plus 
एंड ओ एच माइनस आयंस फ्रॉम वाटर एच प्लस एंड ओ एच माइनस आयंस फ्रॉम एच टू ओ सिंस एच टू ओ इज़ अ वेरी वीक इलेक्ट्रोलाइट सो द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एच प्लस एंड ओ एच माइनस आयंस फ्रॉम वाटर विल बी निगलेक्टेड ऑल्सो सेकेंड नोटिस लेट सपोज एसिड एंड वेस रिएक्ट टू फॉर्म सॉल्ट एंड वाटर एंड इन दिस केस लेट से फॉर दिस एसिड वी हैव बेसिसिटी ऑफ दिस एसिड टू बी इक्वल टू एक्स एंड फॉर दिस बेस लेट से वी हैव एसिडिटी ऑफ दिस बेस इज इक्वल टू वाई इन ऑर्डर टू बैलेंस दिस रिएक्शन वील सिंपली राइट द फाइनल रिएक्शन एज क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाइंग एसिडिटी एंड बेसिसिटी विद ईच अदर सो सिंपली वाई विल गिव गेट मल्टीप्लाइड विद the acid nx with the base so y times acid plus x times base will give us salt and water basically we'll interchange the stoichiometric coefficients and this will be our final reactions interchange acidity and basicity with stoichiometric coefficients and we'll get our final reaction you need need to remember this basic theme now we'll solve a problem here 0.1 m 400 ml H2SO4 is reacted with 0.1 m 600 ml NaOH solution. Calculate number of moles of SO4 minus 2 Na plus H plus in final solution. So we'll simply write the reaction first. H2SO4 reacts with NaOH. It will form certain solution, which will be comprised of Na2SO4 and H2O acid plus base giving salt and water. Simply balance it. So the stoichiometric coefficients will be one two one two. Now, as per the data given, we have zero point one molarity four hundred mL of H two SO four and zero point one molarity six hundred mL of NaOH. Now, by using this data, we'll find the millimoles, which is simply multiplying both of these, which is forty in this case. The millimoles is sixty. Right? We can write. millimoles divided by stoichiometric coefficient the ratio of millimoles to stoichiometric coefficient by using this we'll find the lr basically so in first case it is 40 by 1 which is 40 and in case of noh it is it is 60 by 2 which is 30 so the lower ratio is the lr so this is our limiting reagent since this value is lesser so noh is our limiting reagent so we'll use the data of noh to find out our uh excess reagent left and the moles of product formed so noh is limiting reagent therefore data of noh will be used for calculating for calculating moles of these all these three which we have to find in the final solution na sa4 minus 2 na plus and h plus in final solution moving further we'll write we'll write here that one mole of h2so4 on reacting with two moles of nh gave us Na2SO4, one mole of Na2SO4, and two moles of water, right? Also, at time zero, we have we had 40 millimoles of H2SO4 and 60 millimoles of NaOH. Remember, NaOH is our limiting reagent. At time t is equal to t, when the reaction is almost completed, we'll write this that this limiting reagent. will react in such a way that two moles of NaOH will react with one mole of H2SO4 by unitary methods we can write by using unitary method we can write 60 millimoles of NaOH will react with 1 by 2 multiplied by 60 millimoles of H2SO4 right so the millimoles number of millimoles of H2SO4 
that will react in this reaction will be simply 30 so millimoles of s2so4 reacted is equal to 30 moving further we'll simply use similarly use this unitary method to find out the millimoles of na2so4 formed first we'll write that this amount of NaOH left in the end will be zero since it's LR and the amount of S2SO4 left in the end will be 40 minus 30. 40 is initial, 30 is reacted, so 10. Now we'll solve similarly for Na2SO4 using unitary method. So two moles of NaOH will form one mole of Na2SO4. Two moles of NaOH forms one mole of Na2SO4. So 60 millimoles of NaOH will form 1 by 2 multiplied by 60 millimoles of Na2SO4 so it is 1 by 2 multiplied by 60 which will come out to be 30 so 30 millimoles of Na2SO4 will be formed in the end so here it is 30 and similarly for water we can write it will be 60 using unitary method I didn't do the calculation you can simply observe it that this will come out to be 10 millimoles this is 30 millimoles and this is 60 millimoles now you can simply use this data to find out the answers for the problem so first we'll write that in final solution contribution of H plus and OH minus ion will be neglected H plus and OH minus ions from water will be ignored this is what we wrote in our last note right so moles of SO4 minus 2 moles of Na plus and moles of H plus which we have to calculate as per the problem we'll simply write SO4 minus 2 ions this is present in S2SO4 as well as in Na2SO4 so we'll write 10 plus 30 these are in millimoles to convert it into moles we'll divide it by 1000 it will come out to be 0 0.04 now moles of Na plus, Na plus is present in NaOH and in Na2SO4. In NaOH it is present 2 times of 0 plus here it is present in 2 units 2 times of 30 divided by 1000. It will come out to be 0 0.06. Now similarly moles of H plus, H plus is present in S2SO4 as well as in water but in case of water we will ignore it. So from S2SO4 2 times of 10 plus here since it's water we'll ignore H plus and OH minus ion contribution so it's 0 divided by 1000 it will come out to be 0 0.02 so these are simply our answers moles of SO4 minus 2 moles of Na plus and moles of H plus 0 0.04 0 0.06 and 0 0.02 in the final solution hope you understand this now moving further we'll write another note and that is acid plus base giving salt and water suppose this acid has basicity is equal to S x and this base has acidity equal to y so this y goes in this place this x comes in this place right i am discussing this note again because we are gonna solve a problem based on this so the final reaction will be dash times of acid plus dash time base giving salt plus water in the blank space will simply write y times acid plus x times of base basically cross multiplying it giving salt plus water 
this is the basic theme now problem solving 0.5 gram of NaOH is required by 0.4 gram of polybasic acid of molecular weight 96 gram per mole for complete neutralization find out basicity of this acid once attempt by yourself now we'll solve it here NaOH reacts with a polybasic acid basically NaOH is the base and another one is acid polybasic acid react to form salt and water in this case we'll first write acidity and basicity so basicity of this poly basic acid which we have to find out let's suppose it's x and acidity of this base is 1 because 1 OH ion is present 1 OH minus ion is there so the weight of NaOH given is 0.5 gram whereas for polybasic acids it's 0.4 gram we'll write moles using this data so 0.5 divided by molecular weight of NaOH which is 40 gram per mole it will come out to be 1 by 80 similarly mole of polybasic acid is 0.4 divided by molecular weight which is given 96 gram per mole it will come out to be 1 by 240 so we got moles we have acidity and basicity data using this we will simply find the basicity of polybasic acid so basically we cross multiply right so x times of NaOH plus one time polybasic acid is gonna give us salt and water will give us salt and water we have been we have calculated the data of moles for NaOH it is 1 by 80 and for polybasic acid it's 1 by 240 now we'll simply write that this 1 by 80 will be multiplied with 1 and 1 by 240 will multiply with x in order to find out the value of x it will come out to be x is equal to c x is equal to 3 simply this is our answer basically this is the basicity of polybasic acid which we had to find out right basicity of polybasic acid is equal to 3 now moving further we'll write we'll discuss about subcase 2 in which the precipitate will formed when two reacting solutions will react with each other so precipitate is formed under this we'll write we won't take any contribution we won't take any contribution of ions from precipitate basically we will not consider any contribution of ions from precipitate because precipitate doesn't because precipitate doesn't dissolve doesn't dissociate into ions on dissolving in water basically when precipitate it is dissolved in water it doesn't dissociate into ions that's why we will not take any contribution of ions from from a precipitate now we'll discuss about common precipitate so you can easily recognize them in a problem and don't take any contribution of ions from them common precipitate are AgCl, AgBr, AgI CaCO3, BaSO4, AgCl, AgBr, AgI, CaCO3 and BaSO4. These are common precipitate. You need to remember them. This is a must. Now we'll discuss about an example here. Let's say AgNO3 reacts with NaCl and forms. This one reaction will form simply let's say this is 400 ml 0.1 m this is 600 ml 0.1 m the final product is formed and in this solution in this final solution let's say you have to find out the molarity of ag plus the molarity of na plus as well as the molarity of Cl minus ions how will you find it so in order to find 
the answer for all these we'll write first total volume in this case is 400 ml plus 600 ml which is simply 1 liter 1000 ml which is 1 liter right so molarity is basically moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters so we calculated volume first of all now we'll write the reaction agno3 on reacting with nacl will form agcl and nano3 right so at t equal to 0 we have millimoles of agno3 is equal to 400 times 0.1 which is 40 and for nacl we have it is 60 at t equal to t the millimoles of agno3 left will be 0 why because this is the limiting reagent 40 divided by 1 it will come out to be 40 whereas 60 divided by 1 will be 60 so agno3 is limiting reagent also millimoles of nacl left will be 60 minus 40 which is 20 millimoles of agcl formed will be 40 and for nano3 it will be 40 simply using unitary method now we we have to find out the molarity of ag plus right so ag is present in agno3 and agcl ag plus is present in agno3 zero plus in agcl we won't take the contribution because it's a precipitate this is how we do not a precipitate so 0 plus 0 divided by volume total volume in liter which is 1 1000 which is 0 it will come out to be 0 similarly we'll write molarity of na plus na plus is present in nacl and nano3 so it is 20 plus 40 since it's in millimoles we'll divide it by total volume in milliliters which is 1000 it will come out to be 0.0 06 now molarity of cl minus i cl minus is present in nacl and agcl but we won't consider contribution from agcl because it's a precipitate so 20 plus 0 divided by 1000 it will come out to be 0.02 so we got answer to all three problems ag plus molarity of ag plus molarity of na plus and molarity of cl minus i now It's on another problem here. 50 ml, 20.8 percent WIV of BaCl2 solution and 100 ml, 9.8 percent WIV H2SO4 solution are mixed. Find out weight in gram of precipitate form and second molarity of H plus in final solution. We'll write BaCl2 reacts with H2SO4, and on reacting, this will form BaSO4 and two moles of hcl right so this is our basic reaction also here baso4 is the precipitate you need to take care of this in order to solve this problem also 50 ml 20.8% wiv of bacl2 and 100 ml 9.8% wiv of h2so4 is provided right we know percentage wiv is basically weight of solute weight of solute divided by volume of solution multiplied by 100 this is the simple meaning of wiv percentage now we'll simply put this value for bacl2 so 20.8 is equal to weight of bacl2 divided by volume of solution which is 50 in case of bacl2 multiplied by 100 so weight of bacl2 will come out to be w bacl2 it is 10.4 grams similarly we'll write for h2so4 so wiv percentage in case of h2so4 is 9.8 is equal to w h2so4 which is the solute here divided by volume of solution in case of h2so4 is 100 multiplied by 100 so weight of h2so4 will come out to be 9.8 gram simply now in order to solve the problem further we'll first 
write about the number of moles. So we got the weight of BaCl2 and weight of H2SO4. So we'll write the moles for BaCl2. It will be weight divided by molecular weight. So 10.4 divided by molecular weight, which is for BaCl2 137 plus 2 times of 35.5. It will come out to be 208 gram. So moles is 208 gram per mole. So moles is 10.4 gram divided by 208 gram per mole. It will come out to be 1 by 20, which is 0 0.05. Similarly, for S2SO4, we'll write it moles is equal to 9.8 divided by molecular weight of S2SO4, which is 98 gram per mole. It will come out to be 1 by 10, which is 0 0.1. So simply here, BaCl2 is the LR, right? So it will at t equal to t, the, uh, the moles of BaCl2 will be 0, whereas for S2SO4, it will be 0 0.1 minus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.05 itself. We won't consider BaSO4, so we will write the moles, which is 0 0.05, and the moles of SCl formed in the end will be 2 times of 0 0.05, which is 0 0.01. Sorry, 0 0.1, right? Now, we'll write weight of precipitate formed. So, the precipitate here is BaSO4. So, weight of BaSO4 formed will be simply moles multiplied by molecular weight. So, 0 0.05 multiplied by molecular weight of BaSO4, which is 137 plus 32 plus 64. It will come out to be 233 gram per mole. So, 0 0.05 multiplied by 233 gram per mole so weight of BSO4 will come out to be 10.6 11.65 grams so this is the answer for first part and for second part we have to find out the molarity of H plus in final solution right so if I ion is enclosed in a square bracket it simply means we have to find out the molarity right so molarity of H plus will be moles of H plus divided by total volume of solution in liters right so moles of h plus h plus is present in h2so4 and hcl so in h2so4 it is in two units so 2 multiplied by 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1 divided by total volume in liter which is 50 plus 100 so 150 ml to convert it into liters multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 so it will simply come out to be 1.33 so this is the answer so this is what we got weight of bso4 has 11.65 gram and molarity of h plus is 1.33 hope you understand this hello everyone we are gonna talk about problems involving volume contraction or volume expansion for this purpose we'll draw three containers here in which the solution present in first and second container will be mixed it will form the final solution present in third container so basically here let's say we have hcl solution right in container one in container two we again have hcl solution these two will be mixed and they will form the solution in final container it will also be of hcl right Simply these two are mixed and this is our final solution. Let's say molarity, volume and density for solution in container 1 is M1, V1, D1. For solution in container 2, molarity, volume and density are M2, V2, D2. For solution in container 3, we have to find out the molarity. Let's say density is D. And for volume, you may think for final volume in third container will be V1 plus V2. But that's absolutely wrong that's why we are discussing volume contraction or volume expansion right so to find out the final volarity we'll first write the mass present in first container which is v1 times d1 mass of solution in second container is v2 times d2 and this is the final solution if we have to write the mass in final solution we'll write it as mass of final solution is equal to mass of solution present in container 1 plus container 2 so v1 d1 plus 
V2D2. So we got the mass of final solution. Also, volume of final solution can be written as V0. Density is mass divided by volume. So volume will be mass divided by density. So mass is V1D1 plus V2D2 divided by density of final solution, which is D basically. So we got the volume. Now we have to write the molarity of final solution. So MF molarity of final solution will be M1 V1 plus M2 V2. This is the moles of solute divided by volume of final solution, which is volume of final solution, which is which we calculated in the in the above line. So we'll write M1 V1 plus M2 V2, which is moles of solute divided by V1 D1 plus V2 D2 divided by D. So this is molarity of final solution. Just remember the basic theme, how we calculated the final molarity. Now solving a problem here, 10 milliliters of water of density 1 gram per ml is mixed with 4 milliliters CS3OH of density 0.8 gram per ml to form a solution of density 1.1 gram per ml. Find molarity of final solution. So we'll draw two containers here. Right. So as per the data given, S2O and CS3OH, these are two solutions, S2O and CS3OH. These two are mixed. Here we have the volume of water as 10 milliliters, also density as 1 gram per milliliters. Whereas for CS3OH, we have volume as 4 milliliters and density as 0 0.8 gram per milliliter, right? So using this data, we can find mass for water is equal to 10 times 1, which is 10 gram. Similarly, mass for CS3OH, which is volume times density. So 4 multiplied by 0 0.8, it will come out to be 3.2 grams. So we got the mass in each container. Now we'll write mass of final solution. It will be the sum of mass of water plus CS3OH. It is 10 plus 3.2 grams it will come out to be 13.2 gram so we got the mass of final solution right also volume of final solution the volume of final solution will simply be the will simply be the mass divided by density right so mass is 13.2 and density of final solution is given in the problem itself which is 1.1 gram per ml so 13.2 gram divided by 1.1 gram per ml it will come out to be 12 milliliters so this is volume of final solution now moving further we'll write the molarity we have to find out the molarity of final solution it will be simply the moles of solute divided by volume of final solution in liters so moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter moles of solute here the solute is CS3OH among water and CS3OH the solute is CS3OH the number of moles for CS3OH is weight divided by molecular weight 3.2 gram divided by 32 gram per mole which is 0.1 moles so molarity final MF can be written as 0.1 divided by volume of solution in liter which is 12 milliliters so 12 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 to convert into liter it will come out to be 25 by 3 so simply this will be the answer hope you understand this hello everyone hope you are doing well so today we are gonna talk about some typical concentration terms under this we are gonna discuss about the second typical concentration term which is percentage labeling of oleum so first we'll discuss what's oleum actually so oleum is basically a mixture of s2so4 which is sulfuric acid and so3 so it's a mixture of sulfuric acid and so3 here s2so4 is the acid and so3 is an hydride of acid and hydride is basically the substance which we obtain after removing water from original compound so when we add water to 
SO3 will get the acid which is S2SO4. So on adding an on adding water to anhydride will get the original compound which was S2SO4 in this case. Now we'll discuss about the definition of percentage labeling of oleum. So we'll write percent labeling of oleum is defined percent labeling of oleum is defined as the weight in gram of S2SO4 basically sulfuric acid obtained by the complete hydrolysis of by the complete hydrolysis of 100 gram of oleum sample 100 gram oleum sample so this is the definition so percent labeling of oleum is defined as weight in gram of S2SO4 obtained by the complete hydrolysis of 100 gram oleum sample so just remember the definition now we'll write an example so you better understand so let's say oleum is given as 109 percent in a compound we have oleum as 109 percent so we know what's oleum it is S2SO4 plus SO3 the weight of S2SO4 in this case will be 60 gram and SO3 is 40 gram this is standard weight for 100 gram oleum sample now the fi in for final mixture we have we have to do complete hydrolysis basically adding water and we'll get oleum as 109 percentage which in simple term also means that the weight of S2SO4 finally obtained will be 109 gram this is simple conclusion which we can draw from the above given example that 109 percent oleum means 109 gram S2SO4 in the final sample so molecular weight of SO3 we know it is 80 gram per mole and weight of water is 109 minus 100 which will come out to be 9 gram so weight of water added is 9 gram molecular weight of SO3 is 80 gram per mole so on adding water to SO3 we got S2SO4 right at t is equal to 0 times 0 we have we'll write number of moles of SO3 first so moles will be weight divided by molecular weight it will come out to be 40 divided by 80 so 1 by 2 similarly for water it will be 1 by 2 moles at time t equal to t when the reaction will be over then these both of them have the same stoichiometric coefficient so both will get completely new utilized so moles of S2SO4 which will be obtained finally will be 1 by 2 moles so we can write weight of S2SO4 finally as weight of S2SO formed as moles multiplied by molecular weight of S2SO4 which is 98 gram per mole so 1 by 2 multiplied by 98 it will come out to be 49 gram so weight of S2SO4 formed will be 49 gram right so this is simple example just to give you a quick overview of oleum now we'll talk about percent free SO3 this is also an important topic which comes under percentage labeling of oleum so first we'll write the definition of percentage free SO3 so it's the weight in gram of it's the weight in gram of it's the weight in gram of SO3 present in 100 gram of oleum sample so this is the simple definition that percent free SO3 is the weight in gram of the weight in gram of SO3 present in 100 gram of oleum sample so simply remember this definition now we'll write the formula for percent free SO3 just remember this simple formula so we'll be able to solve the problems we'll write percent free SO3 is equal to percentage labeling of oleum minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80 so this is simple formula just remember it percentage free SO3 is equal to percentage labeling of oleum minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80 now moving further we'll solve a problem here a 30 gram oleum, oleum sample contains 6 gram of S2SO4 find percentage labeling of this oleum sample so we have to find percentage labeling so first we'll write what's oleum it is a mixture of S2SO4 and SO3 right 
हियर वी आर गिवेन द वेट ऑफ ओलियम सैम्पल इज थर्टी ग्राम द वेट ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर इज सिक्स ग्राम एज पर द प्रॉब्लम एंड वेट ऑफ एस ओ थ्री वी डोंट नो राइट सो हाउ वी हाउ विल वी फाइंड इट आउट सो विल राइट वेट ऑफ एस ओ थ्री इज इक्वल टू वेट ऑफ ओलियम माइनस वेट ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर सो सिंपली थर्टी ग्राम माइनस सिक्स ग्राम इट विल कम आउट टू बी ट्वेंटी फोर ग्राम सो वेट ऑफ एस ओ थ्री इज ट्वेंटी फोर ग्राम ऑल्सो we can write percentage free so3 so as per the definition we will write weight in gram of so3 present in 100 gram oleum sample right so 24 divided by 30 multiplied by 100 it will come out to be 80 so this is percentage free so3 we have to find out percentage labeling so we will write the formula that percentage free so3 is basically percentage labeling Percentage labeling or percentage labeling of oleum minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80. So we'll simply put these values. So percentage free SO3 it is itself 80 is equal to percentage labeling which we have to find out minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80. So 80 and 80 will get cancelled out. So percentage labeling of oleum will come out to be 100 plus 18, right? So it is 118 percent. So simply, this is the answer for this problem. Now we'll move further. We'll write a note. This is an important note. Under this, we'll write percent labeling. Percent labeling of oleum can also be expressed as. percent labeling of oleum can also be expressed as 100 plus x percent if somewhere you are given percentage labeling of oleum is equal to 100 plus some x percentage then here x will x refers to the weight in gram of h2o added or weight in gram of water added to completely hydrate to completely hydrate 100 g of oleum sample completely hydrate 100 g of oleum sample so x is basically weight in gram of water added to completely hydrate 100 g oleum sample so if such expression is given just remember what do we mean by x the simple term right now we'll move further we'll write minimum labeling of oleum so what can be the minimum value of percent labeling of oleum we'll discuss about it here at for minimum labeling we will have weight of so3 in oleum is equal to 0 g we know oleum is oleum consist of h2so4 and so3 right so for minimum labeling of oleum the weight of so3 should be 0 g in a 100 g sample of oleum weight of h2so4 will be 100 g and weight of so3 should be 0 g for minimum labeling right so we'll write percent free so3 in this case will be simply 0 divided by 100 multiplied by 100 which is itself 0 right so percentage free so3 is 0 we'll write percentage labeling so for that purpose we'll first write the formula percentage free is so3 is equal to percentage labeling minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80 right so we'll simply put the value percentage free so3 in this case is 0 is equal to percentage labeling minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80 so on further solving percentage labeling will simply come out to be 100 so this is the minimum labeling of an oleum sample just remember this simple value this is minimum now we'll talk about maximum so we'll write maximum labeling of oleum so what can be the maximum value of percentage labeling of oleum we'll discuss here that for maximum labeling 
द वेट ऑफ एस ओ थ्री इन ओलियम शुड बी इक्वल टू हंड्रेड ग्राम सो इन दिस केस इट्स जस्ट दी अपोजिट एज इट वॉज इन द अर्लियर केस सो ओलियम वी नो इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर एंड एस ओ थ्री मिक्सचर हियर इट्स हंड्रेड ग्राम द वेट ऑफ एस ओ थ्री इज हंड्रेड ग्राम सो वेट ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर विल सिंपली बी जीरो ग्राम नाउ वील राइट द परसेंट फ्री एस ओ थ्री इन दिस केस विच इज हंड्रेड डिवाइड बाई हंड्रेड मल्टीप्लाइड बाई हंड्रेड इट विल सिंपली कम आउट टू बी हंड्रेड वी गॉट द परसेंटेज फ्री एस ओ थ्री यूजिंग दिस वील राइट परसेंटेज लेबरिंग ऑफ ओलियम इन दिस केस सो वील फर्स्ट राइट द फॉर्मुला डेट परसेंटेज फ्री एस ओ थ्री इज इक्वल टू परसेंटेज लेबलिंग माइनस हंड्रेड डिवाइड बाई एटीन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एट्टी एट जीरो सो सिंपली पुटिंग द वैल्यू हंड्रेड इज इक्वल टू परसेंटेज लेबलिंग माइनस हंड्रेड डिवाइड बाई एटीन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एट्टी ऑन सॉल्विंग विल गेट परसेंटेज लेबलिंग इज इक्वल टू वन टू टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज सो दिस इज द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू दिस इज मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ परसेंटेज लेबलिंग ऑफ ओलियम सो वी गॉट सो वी फाइनली गॉट दैट द रेंज ऑफ दैट द रेंज फॉर परसेंट लेबलिंग ऑफ ओलियम इज हंड्रेड टू वन ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव राइट हंड्रेड इज द मिनिमम वन ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव इज द मैक्सिमम हंड्रेड टू वन ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव दिस मे बी आस्ट इन द प्रॉब्लम इन इन बेसिकली सिंगल करेक्ट प्रॉब्लम डायरेक्टली दैट्स वाई वी डिस्कस नाउ इल सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम हियर सिक्स ग्राम ऑफ एस टू इज एडेड टू हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ एन ओलियम सैम्पल लेबल्ड एज वन जीरो नाइन परसेंट इन फाइनल मिक्सचर फाइंड ऑफ वेट ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर फॉर्म वेट ऑफ एस ओ थ्री लेफ्ट एंड परसेंट इज लेबलिंग ऑफ ओलियम इन न्यूली फॉर्म सैम्पल सो वी नो ओलियम इज एस टू एस ओ फोर इज अ मिक्सचर ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर एंड एस ओ थ्री राइट सो हियर इट्स हंड्रेड ग्राम एंड स्टैंडर्ड हंड्रेड ग्राम ओलियम मिक्सचर द वेट ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर इज सिक्सटी ग्राम एंड एस ओ थ्री इज कंसिडर्ड फोर्टी ग्राम्स सो सिक्स ग्राम ऑफ वाटर इज एडेड एज पर द प्रॉब्लम एंड फाइनली वी नो डेट एस टू when water is added to so3 it forms s2so4 right so we'll write the moles of so3 which is weight divided by molecular weight 40 divided by 80 g per mole it will come out to be 1 by 2 similarly moles of water it will come out to be 6 divided by 18 which is 1 by 3 right so at time t equal to 0 we have moles of so3 as 1 by 2 and moles of water as 1 by 3 right now we'll calculate the moles to stoichiometric coefficient ratio so on calculating we'll get that moles to stoichiometric coefficient ratio of water is lower so water is the lr here so water will be consumed completely whereas so3 will be left how much so3 will be left it will be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 which is 1 by 6 moles similarly s2so4 will be formed how much s2so4 will be formed it will be determined by lr so water is lr so 1 by 3 moles will be formed now we have to find out weight of S2SO4 formed in the first part, right? So weight of S2SO4 formed will be moles multiplied by molecular weight. That will be the weight of S2SO4 for formed. So it will come out to be 98 by 3 gram. This is the answer for first part. In second form, in second part, we have to find out weight of SO3 left. So it will be moles multiplied by molecular weight. How many moles of SO3 is left? It is 1 by 6 multiplied by 80 gram per mole. It will come out to be 40 by 3 grams now in third part we have to find out percentage labeling of oleum in newly formed sample right this is the answer of first part this is the answer of second part and in third part we have to find out percentage labeling of oleum in new sample right this is the problem so we know s2so4 and so3 these two are the these two are the mixture for oleum and how much s2so4 is present so 60 g plus this s2so4 formed which is 98 by 3 g so it is 60 plus 98 by 3 and similarly we will write for so3 how many how much so3 is present here it is 40 by 3 g 
if we sum it up it will come out to be uh, 60 plus 98 by 3 plus 40 by 3 it will be 106 gram sorry 100 no not 100 it is 106 gram so to solve further we will move to next page we have to find out percentage labeling of oleum in new sample or in the final sample right we have mixture of s2so4 and so3 right how much s2so4 is there it is 60 plus 98 by 3 gram 60 gram which we took earlier and 98 by 3 gram which is formed later and how much so3 is there it is 40 by 3 gram this together weighs 106 gram which is oleum here and in this 106 gram we have 100 gram oleum and 6 gram of water right as per the problem we have 100 gram oleum and 6 gram water in this 106 gram mixture so 106 gram oleum has 40 by 3 gram of so3 right so 100 gram oleum will have similarly simply use unitary method 40 by 3 multiplied by 100 divided by 106 this is the weight of so3 in 100 gram oleum now we'll write percent free so3 which will be simply the weight of so3 here weight of so3 present in 100 gram oleum sample is percent free so3 right it will come out to be 4000 divided by 308 now we'll write the formula for percentage labeling which is percentage free so3 is equal to percentage labeling minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80 right simply we'll put the value that percentage free so3 here is 4000 divided by 318 is equal to percentage labeling which we have to find out percentage labeling of oleum minus 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 80 we'll simply solve it and we'll get the answer for percentage labeling so percentage labeling is equal to 103 this will come out to be this will be the answer which will come out it will be approximately 103 so percentage labeling of oleum in final sample or in new sample which is finally formed right simply this is the answer hope you understand this now we'll talk about some other mixtures some other mixtures which behave as oleum so there are some mixtures which behave as oleum we know oleum it is s2so4 plus so3 right it is a mixture of s2so4 and so3 so there are some mixtures which behave similar as oleum here s2so4 is the acid and so3 is the anhydride of acid basically anhydride is found when water is removed from the acid so some other mixtures under this we'll discuss the first mixture which is s2so4 plus co2 here s2so4 s2co3 plus co2 here s2co3 is the acid and co2 is the anhydride of acid so the reaction will simply be on adding water to co2 it will form s2co3 which is carbonic acid basically so this is the first mixture similarly the second mixture is which behaves as oleum is the mixture of s2so3 and so2 here s2so3 is the acid and so2 is the anhydride the reaction here simply will be uh, we'll add water to so2 and it will form the acid which is s2so3 so so2 plus h2o will give out s2so3 anhydride plus water is equal to the acid the third reaction the third mixture which behaves as oleum is hno3 plus n2o5 here hno3 is the acid n2o5 is the anhydride of acid simply we'll write the reaction here anhydride of hno3 basically reaction here will be we'll add water to n2o5 n2o5 plus h2o will give hno3 right if we simply balance it here 2 will come right now we'll write the fourth example fourth mixture which behaves as oleum so it is s3po4 plus p4o10 a mixture of s3po4 and p4o10 behaves as oleum here s3po4 is the acid 
and P4O10 is the anhydride of S3PO4. The reaction here simply will be P4O10 on reacting with water or on mixing water in it forms S3PO4. Now we will simply balance it. So here it will be 4 and here uh, adjacent to water we will have stoichiometric coefficient as 6. Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. Today we are gonna talk about some typical concentration terms. We will discuss the first term which is volume strength of H2O2. The other term is called percentage labeling of oleum. Today we will discuss about the first term only which is volume strength of H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide. We will first discuss the definition. So the volume strength of H2O2 is defined the volume strength of H2O2 is defined as the volume in liter of oxygen gas evolved volume in liter of oxygen gas evolved by the decomposition of volume in liter of oxygen gas evolved by the decomposition of 1 liter of H2O2 solution 1 liter of hydrogen peroxide solution at STP standard temperature and pressure. So the volume strength of H2O2 is defined as the volume in liter of oxygen gas evolved. Volume in liter of oxygen gas evolved by decomposition of 1 liter of hydrogen peroxide solution at STP. I am repeating this definition again and again so you remember it. This is very important definition. Now the basic reaction that's occurring here is H2O2 which is in aqueous states decomposes, decomposes into water in aqueous states and half mole of oxygen gas in gaseous state. Here let's say the volume strength let volume strength of H2O2 solution is V. This is what we have assumed. So if we write the reaction again in order to find the volume of oxygen gas evolved what it will be. So let's say we have to find the how much volume of oxygen gas is evolved. So I'll write volume of O2 gas evolved will be equal to guess the answer. So here we can see from definition that the volume strength of H2O2 is volume in liter of oxygen gas evolved simply. So the volume strength is V. So volume of gas evolved will be V liters volume of, of oxygen gas evolved will be V liter at standard temperature and pressure simply. So we got the volume we will write moles of oxygen gas will be equal to at STP we are talking so it will be V divided by 22.7 this is the volume at STP 22.7 liter so moles of oxygen gas will be V divided by 22.7. Now let's see the stoichiometric coefficient. So for oxygen it is half so we will write that half mole of O2 is formed when one mole of hydrogen peroxide reacts decomposes sorry when one mole of hydrogen peroxide decomposes. So one mole of oxygen will be formed when two mole of hydrogen peroxide will decompose right. So here the mole of oxygen gas is V divided by 22.7 right. So V divided by 22.7 mole of oxygen will be formed when 2 multiplied by V divided by 22.7 moles of hydrogen peroxide de will decompose right so moles of hydrogen peroxide is 2 multiplied by V divided by 22.7 right so moles of hydrogen peroxide will be V divided by 11.35 on solving we will get this value so this is at STP just remember this simple value so when 1 liter of hydrogen peroxide is decomposed only then volume strength of hydrogen peroxide will be defined right so just remember the volume which is 1 liter in this case so moles of hydrogen peroxide is V divided by 11.35 volume of hydrogen peroxide is 1 liter which we already saw from the formula so 
using moles and volume we can write molarity of hydrogen peroxide it will be simply molarity will be v divided by 11.35 divided by one basically moles divided by volume in liter so v divided by 11.35 also we know we can see that at stp molarity of s2o2 came out to be v divided by 11.35 and at normal temperature and pressure the molarity of s2o2 will come out to be v divided by 11.2 so these are two simple values which you need to rem remember for determining molarity of s2o2 at stp and at ntp now moving further here a bottle of s2o2 solution is labeled as 44.8 v if density of solution is 1.136 gram per mole then find out molarity of s2o2 at ntp W by V percentage and third W by W percentage. Once attempted by yourself. Now we'll solve it here. Forty-four point eight V. The labeling is forty-four point eight V for S two O two. This means that volume strength of S two O two is forty-four point eight. The volume strength of S two O two solution is forty-four point eight. Right. So using this, we can write the molarity of S2O2. It will simply be V divided by 11.2. It is defined at NTP, so V divided by 11.2. It will come out to be 44.8 divided by 11.2, which is 4. So we got the molarity of S2O2. This is the answer. Now we'll write. This is the first. answer now moving to second part we have to find the w by v percentage i have already discussed the simple formula for which is relation between molarity and w by v percentage in case you didn't see the video so click on the i button appearing on top right corner so the molarity will be w by v percentage multiplied by 10 divided by molecular weight of solute so the molarity is for w by v percentage which we have to determine in this case multiplied by 10 divided by molecular weight of solute here the solute is s2o2 so we'll find the molecular weight of s2o2 which is 2 times 1 plus 2 times 16 it will come out to be 34 gram per mole so simply we'll write this value here 4 is equal to w by v percentage Multiplied by ten divided by thirty-four. So W by V percentage will come out to be four multiplied by thirty-four divided by ten, which is simply thirteen point six. So this is the answer for second part. Now we have to find out. In th so the second part answer is W by V percentage is equal to thirteen point six. Now the in third part we have to find out W by W percentage. Right, so we'll simply write the formula again. This formula is a little bit different, and this density term will be involved. I have already discussed about this formula. So molarity is equal to W by W percentage multiplied by 10 d, 10 times d divided by molecular weight of solute. So molarity, which we already defined, uh, determined earlier, which is 4, is equal to W by W percentage multiplied by 10 multiplied by d what is the value of d so it's here given in the problem itself density of solution is 1.136 gram per mole gram per milliliter sorry so 1.136 divided by molecular weight of solute which is 34 gram per mole on solving w by w percentage will come out to be 4 times 34 divided by 11.36 which is simply 11. 96 this is the answer so we got the answer of all three parts molarity w by v percentage and w by w percentage hope you understand this now moving further we'll solve another problem if you are able to solve such problems in chemistry then you will be able to clear je advanced examination here 500 ml 33.6 v of s2o2 solution undergoes partial decomposition to produce 8 gram oxygen gas find out volume strength of s2o2 solution which is left after the reaction this point is crucial here pressure and temperature are given and volume remains unaffected once attempted by yourself now i'll solve it so 
here H2O2 which is in aqueous state decomposes into water in aqueous state plus oxygen gas oxygen in gaseous state now we'll balance it hydrogen is balanced to balance oxygen i will multiply here by 1 by 2 so it's balanced now here the pressure and temperature conditions are given this is condition of ntp sorry i wrote stp it's ntp so molarity of h2o2 at ntp is v divided by 11.2 this is ntp so molarity of h2o2 can be written as v is given as 33.6 so 33.6 divided by 11.2 so molarity of h2o2 came out to be 3 right also we are provided the volume of h2o2 here so we can write moles of h2o2 as molarity times volume in liter molarity uh, multiplied by volume in liter so it will be 3 times 500 divided by 1000 so as to convert it into liters this will come out to be 1.5 so we got the moles of h2o2 which was taken initially during the reaction again writing the reaction h2o2 in aqueous state decomposes into water in aqueous state plus half oxygen in gaseous state at t equal to 0 when reaction is started 1.5 moles of h2o2 is were was present right 1.5 moles at t is equal to time t when reaction was over the moles of h2o2 present will be 1.5 minus x let's say x moles dissociated so here the moles of oxygen gas that will be formed will be x by 2 and for water x right so this will be in moles now moles of oxygen gas here is x by 2 we can write moles as weight divided by molecular weight for oxygen gas right weight divided by molecular weight this will be value will be equal to x by 2 so weight is provided in the problem itself you can see 8 gram of o2 is produced right so 8 divided by molecular weight of o2 which is 32 gram per mole is equal to x by 2 on solving x will come out to be 1 by 2 which is 0 0.5 so x is 0 0.5 moles right so now moving further h2o2 aqueous decomposed into water in aqueous state plus half in oxygen gaseous state right x is 0 0.5 remember the value t equal to 0 1.5 moles at t equal to t 1.5 minus x here x for water x and for oxygen x by 2 moles we know the value of x is 0 0.5 moles which we determined on last page now here if we see by stoichiometry coefficient half moles of oxygen gas is produced when one mole h2o2 decomposes right so one 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 mole of h2o2 is decomposed half mole of oxygen is produced similarly one mole of oxygen is produced when two moles when two moles of h2o2 decomposes right two mole of h2o2 so here the number of moles of o2 is x by 2 so x by 2 mole of o2 will be produced when 2 multiplied by x by 2 2 multiplied by x by 2 mole of h2o2 will decompose right so moles of h2o2 will come out to be x simply we cross multiplied right so moles of h2o2 is which reacted in the reaction which is x and the value of x is 0 0.5 which we determined already right so we got the value of x moles of h2o2 reacted now we'll write moles of h2o2 left that will be initial moles minus reacted moles right so left is initial minus reacted so initial moles of h2o2 is 1.5 and the reacted moles which is x is 0 0.5 right this will come out to be 1 so we got moles of h2o2 left as per the problem we have to find out volume strength of h2o2 left this was our main problem which we had to find out the value so we'll write molarity of 
H2O2 left will be equal to moles of H2O2 left moles of H2O2 left divided by volume in liters volume of H2O2 in liters this is the simple formula for molarity right so moles of H2O2 left is 1 volume of H2O2 in liter is 500 milliliters multi divide by 1000 to convert into liter this will come out to be 2 so we got the molarity of H2O2 left now we'll simply write molarity of H2O2 is equal to V divided by ln.2 since it is de defined at NTP so 2 is equal to V divided by ln.2 will, V will come out to be 22.4 so simply this is the answer this is volume strength of H2O2 left volume strength of left H2O2 in case you didn't get how we determine this answer you can rewind the video hope you understand this 